Welcome to the second part of critical interview questions. My name is Shonak and you're watching this video on my channel Physics for Students. Okay, so the next question which comes up in our series is that when teaching a concept that involves math, do you prefer to work students individually or in group? Now this is again something which is very central. Uh, you need to understand that group studies as well as individual studies, both of them are beneficial. Here is a quick catch to this answer. When it comes to teaching a concept that involves math, I believe that the best approach to use to both group and individual. So you are doing a very diplomatic answer, remember. So during uh, group work can be beneficial in helping students understand a concept. If you have uh, watched my earlier videos on how to make career, um, uh, you know, career videos, I've always told that group work actually helps because you might know a concept, your friend doesn't know, exchange, talk to each other, and it really helps out. So group works can be beneficial in helping students which understands the concepts. Individual works allow students to focus on their own understanding. So here is something a very catchy. The recruiter wants to know that can you answer properly or do you have both the things in your way? That means you can ask them work both individually as well as in group. Groups are good because for concepts which are very important in understanding that is that is something which is done and individuals because sometimes you have to really sit back and you have to enjoy things. So I, I think that that, that would be uh, something uh, very important in terms of understanding. Okay, the second question which comes is that we now this is this is something very very crucial you see that nowadays the physics teacher are not physics teacher they also need to go to certain areas and explore. So we want to improve our outreach to local high schools. How would you approach local administrators to promote our program? So don't get angry if you get this kind of a question because this is a question which is asked on a very common fashion because nowadays there are a lot of PR. You have to counsel the teachers at least for the school level if you're going for a physics teacher. So number one is that you go and demonstrate the value of the program, right? That is one. I have a strong track record of developing and implementing success outreach programs. That means you have, maybe you have got a, a kind of a PR where earlier you have gone to certain schools, talk to people because this is a kind of a marketing. This is a kind of a thing which the school or the college wants to promote their uh, programs to other schools. So how do you do that? Third is that to start with research into the needs of the local high school. Obviously, each school will have their own need and you need to know what actually the needs are. Fourth point is that this could be done through surveys, interviews, a focus of groups to determine the, uh, what they're looking. And finally, reaching out the administration through phone call, WhatsApp or through an email or going and meeting them directly. So you see, I will be very frank and honest with you, the college that I work into uh, they are not always very fixed to one kind of a uh, discipline that you will be only a teacher so you only teach you're an administrator you only do administration now this current era of digital is a time when everything is being uh, i would say everything is uh, uh, is a multifarious job you work as a teacher you work, sometimes you might work also as a student counselor you are counseling the parents also so what the teacher or the recruiter wants to know that in order to become an asset for the company, all you need to do is that never say no to anything. I can adapt myself to anything. I mean, at least up to the level of grad, undergrad, if you're teaching a dissertation or PhD topics, that is something different. So it is actually the recruiter wants to know and understand how fast you can develop and whether you have the PR ability, whether you can go meet with people, talk and get things. Every school is looking to upgrade. Describing your, describe your process for preparing for a lesson. Now this is something I think this is very common. So I've given just a few question answers. To start by getting familiar with the material, create an outline of the key points, have a plenty of engaging activities, review all materials at, at last before you start the lesson. Now see, lesson plan is something which carries a lot of things. I can make a totally separate video on how to make lesson plans for physics and mathematics. But what they want to know is that, do you know the uh, students, number one? That means you're quite aware about the students, that is false. 
second thing is that do you know the material because if you really don't know the material there is no point in making a lesson plan and then you create an outline of key points that means i will do this 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 and this some of them might might not be very useful some of them might be useful so it 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 looks for creating a lot of lesson plans and stuffs like that okay so this is a very crucial question i mean to say uh, this is termed in both way here it comes what makes you a good fit in the school what makes you good fit in the school and it is same to something which you called as why should i hire you now try to understand uh, all my dear students and viewers that this is a competitive world this is a world where like you there are many other people who are standing or waiting in the queue now what the recruiter is asking is that do you are you the right fit for this job are you absolutely the right person because there are so many people you see standing in the queue why we die hired you now this is something which i mostly talk on webinars taking a lot of time because my webinars are mostly 2 hours but this is a a kind of a short video so i will try to make it and make it up to the point the first point would be what would you actually like to implement you are a physics teacher we know that you understand gravity electromagnetism the way nature works but how and what would you actually implement remember i am not talking of physics or the subjects or the mathematics but what would you like to implement i uh, spoke in the first episode of the lesson plans where you mostly talk about creating quizzes creating problems implementation etc this is what would you like to implement the second point which come with what a difference would you make now see in physics what happens or in any subject let us take physics for this kind of a video is that uh, you there are many teachers who will te tell that i am good i have done a gold medal i am a doctor everything is fine but what makes actually the difference the difference is that you open the door and you walk inside a class you get a lot many students around here so what actually you do is that you either engage students you uh, show them certain videos you show them i i remember brian cox a great uh, uh, you know uh, physics i would say science popularizer used long uh, waves you know i would say strings to wave and to find out that how wave actually behaves what is the frequency and the amplitude so what is professor cox doing is that he is using direct materials in order to show what is amplitude what is frequency and what is wavelength right so what actual difference would you make i will use uh you know charts and papers i will use audio visual i will use uh, you know uh, daily materials to demonstrate physics what actually you do what value addition would you make so my value addition would be making science popular your value addition would be to do uh, physics in a fun loving way another person's uh, you know you know uh, what we would say the objective value addition would be to uh, you know to uh, to make physics and mathematics in such a way so that they understand the deep underlying philosophy so what difference you would make remember that difference is not that they would good get a good score or you will teach them or you will complete the curriculum that the recruiter already knows that you will do that why because you are already implemented as a teacher so what the difference and value addition would you do do not speak about passion love etc this is a common question why do you want to become a physics teacher i love teaching physics is within my gene physics is something which i really like we all know i also love teaching i also love physics that is why i am making this video so that i can communicate something which i have learned to you but for the recruiter what really matters is that how important and what factual contribution would you make would you make them a good score would you uh, show them hands on activities would they love teaching uh, learning physics or maybe it happened that there are certain boring or difficult classes and focus on the tangible benefit this is important because all they want to know is that whether you have given the appropriate tangible thing speaking not about passion etc so i took a little bit more time because this is very very important that you really focus and try to find out that what tangible benefit and that is the reason questions one is that provide an example of time when you uh, um, had to adapt your lesson plan due to understanding of behavior here is a sample answer to that 
you can always say that I recently had a situation where I needed to adapt my lesson. During the lesson, some of the students were not listening and then you adapted. So I think that this is something which we have already repeated. It is more or less that kind of a same answer. Okay, now comes the another important part is that the most important thing for students to learn about physics. Obviously, the way things behave, the way the world it is, the way things are around. So what do you learn physics is that how the world or whatever you see around is something which is related to physics and you can have an easy explanation to that. How often do you update your lesson plans? Yes, very, very, very important. Why? Because uh, you learn physics 10 years back, 20 years back or 12 years back, now physics have changed. There are a lot of changes, there are a lot of updation, a lot of things which has come up. The way physics we learned, now I myself have to upgrade myself. Why? Because the learning has changed, because there are a lot of new things have happened, even notations have changed, the way of teaching has changed. So yes, the answer would be, I often upgrade myself as lesson plan. You can say six months or about a year, or maybe on a, on, on a quarterly basis, because nowadays internet is there and everything is there. You can just find out and do those. Uh, if a student is struggling with the concept, what techniques do you use to help them to understand? So uh, these are the answers. Problem with abstract thinking. This is something again very important. So if a person, if a student is struggling with a concept, then there there can be uh, you know multiple ways of addressing to this problem. Now if there is an abstract thinking problem, uh, this would take time because abstract thinking cannot be developed in one or two days time. So this is going to take time. Uh, the student doesn't find any relevance yeah because I am doing thermodynamics or I am doing all those divergence and curl of a vector etc but what would I do to my real life because you know I am going to office or I am going back to my home and doing my research and studies and I cannot really see what is divergence and curl so they are losing interest and find relevance try to get the relevance among the student conceptual problem yes you can explain using techniques methods etc a lot of conceptual problem skill based question or skill based problem if it is a skill based problem then what you need to do is that you need to find out more of the skill that the candidate needs to approach and always there is a mental blockage Mental blockage in the sense that, oh, this is difficult. I won't ever understand mathematics. I won't ever ever understand physics. So that is a, a kind of a mental blockage some of the students have. So how do you address to them? You already know them. So if it is an abstract thinking, it is a problem of relevance, losing the interest, conceptual problem or conceptual. So if a student is struggling with a concept, what techniques do you help to use them to understand? These are the techniques that I need to understand. So first is the identification why the student is struggling. So for those, these points are there, abstract thinking, conceptual problems, lack of motivation or skill. So try to find out what exactly it is and find the So answer. that's it. I have completed two series of videos on how to uh, answer the interview question as a physics teacher or as a, uh, you know, if you're going into a physics job. These are very recent questions which are being asked, I can tell you. So if you go through those, and if you have any suggestions, please do let me know in the comment box. I would like to answer questions which have been asked specifically to this subject, but more on critical thinking, how you adapt yourself to the culture, how do you plan the lesson, how things happen, how do you improve the PR, because nowadays the colleges and institutions are focusing more and more on this. So thank you for watching this video. Uh, uh, if you have anything, please do let me know. Please do subscribe to Physics for Students, like and put up your comments and I would be back with more important and uh, career related videos as on when things proceed. Thank you very much and have a nice day. Thank you for watching this video. We appreciate your time and patience. If you want to connect with us and provide further feedback, comment or suggestions, please email us at contact.physicsforstudents at gmail.com You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram and LinkedIn. See you soon in the next video.